All right, so now that we have done the reparations, we need to change it back to RGB. Um, and you could change it back to CMYK if your printer is CMYK as well. Uh, and I need to actually clean up a couple other things that I missed before. So I'm going to use the healing, or the, excuse me, spot healing tool. And I'm going to clean that random little hair up. Okay, and then there's another one. So you can see a few little spots here that I missed before. And I want to go ahead and take care of those now while I'm thinking about it. And let's see, I think there are a couple of little spots over here. And I think that's pretty good. And then this little spot right here, I think I need to make the brush even smaller because it's got some light and dark patches near it. So I don't want to mess up the coloration of that area. So there we go. I think that that's pretty good. Now, uh, what I want to do is go back over here and I want to colorize the face. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Now that we're in RGB, this will work. And I want to click on colorize for hue saturation. And I'm going to kind of turn up the red so that it's in a sort of uh, sort of a Caucasian um, sort of pale skin tone range and that looks about right and don't worry about the eyes and stuff like that and the lips we're gonna I'll show you how to deal with that in just a minute so I'm going to adjust the hue to somewhere around 23 in this case and saturation turned down to around 23 as well and now I need to make some se selections for the eyes um, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to select, let me show you what happens if I try to use the smart uh, wand tool, the smart selection tool. Um, if I blow this thing up, you'll notice that it kind of doesn't make a super clean selection. It doesn't do a terrible job, but I think that it needs to be a lot better looking than that. So I don't recommend that you use that tool. Um, and, I, you know, I played with the settings and stuff and still had a hard time. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. If you click and hold and then press and hold also, shift option on a Mac or shift alt on Windows, and then you drag, it's going to create a perfect circle from the center. And then you release, you need to make sure you release the mouse first. Um, and then I'm also going to add to the selection by drawing another circle inside of it. You hold down shift to add to the selection, right? And then I'm... Um, then you start to drag and hold option and this way you can add on to that selection and and start to get a, a less than regular circular shape but you still get these really nice curves on the edge and that's sort of a little flat right around here so i'm going to use the polygon tool by holding shift and then clicking to kind of fill in that gap where it kind of had a little bump in and then i also need to hold down option or alt and start to remove the area that's up near um, the eyelid and I'm going to cut off some of the eyelashes as well because they're so dark that we need those to kind of keep extending without being colorized because we don't want to colorize the eyelashes um, and then have this weird you know big blue blob or whatever color we're going to make the eyes all right so now we've got a pretty decent selection um, but one of the things that I want to do is jump to the quick mask mode and now you can actually see your selection and it shows uh, all the masked out parts in red. I'm going to choose that the brush tool, the paintbrush tool, so I can start to kind of paint in some adjustments to my quick mask and I want to soften the edge because you'll notice that right around the edges in some spots it kind of gradually fades and you'll notice that I have my opacity turned down on this brush and that my brush size is for me right of right about now is around 19 and you'll notice that I'm kind of just using the very edge of the brush and I'm going to change the hardness so that it's a little bit harder because it's a little too soft but it's not fully it doesn't have full hardness and then I need to uh, just keep making some adjustments make it that a little bit harder so I can get rid of that harsh edge at the bottom and then it just kind of looks a little bit more natural like it did in the picture and so that's what I'm going to kind of do up here too because the opacity is turned down, I can sort of soften the transition a little bit between the eyelashes and the eye and just keep making some some other changes. Let's change the brush size 
so it's a little bit bigger. And then now I'm going to try to match it for the size of the pupil. And if you look closely, uh, depending on how clear the video is, um, I'm going to basically hold down Option, <clears throat> excuse me, or not Option, I'm just going to uh, add to the mask with the paintbrush. And I'm going to just start clicking in the center so that I'm also going to mask out the pupil. All right, I'm going to exit quick mask mode so I can see my selection again. And the reason I'm exiting out of the, or not including the pupil, is I don't want the pupil to be blue or green or whatever color. I'm going to save my selection now so that in case I ever deselect or want to use that selection again, and I will, then I can just reload it and see. I'll show you what happens if I uh, were to deselect. I'll just click somewhere off of here and I lost my selection but now I can go back up to select and then load selection and I can choose that same selection that I had just created by clicking on the channel choosing left iris and then boom it loads it for me and this is going to be incredibly valuable later you'll see so I'm going to uh, just save my file real quick. That's a good idea to continually save your file. I'm going to start doing that thing again on the, the right eye where I click in the center, hold shift option, drag out to create a perfect circle, and then holding shift down again, click, and then hold down option. I can start to drag out from the center to create a sort of a, an irregular shape if I want to to add to that. And you'll notice that I'm kind of trying to keep my boundaries so that they don't overlap too much with the original circle on the edges so it keeps a nice roundish shape and now I'm going to use polygon tool to exclude that part of the the eye socket that that sort of uh, cuts into the circle and I'll remove that so that it it doesn't turn that part of the skin a color when I go to color the eyes okay and so that's looking pretty good. Now I think the next thing I want to do is go down and I want to blow this up and I want to take a closer look at the selection edge. And you see that I think I need to soften it up. See how it's got this sort of dark and light halo. I'm going to go into quick mask again. And again, I can use my <clears throat> paintbrush tool and I can start painting. And you want to make sure this is something I didn't say before as I change my brush size and opacity and stuff. You want to make sure that the foreground uh, color is not white, but that the foreground is black. All right. So I'm going ahead and I'm working out the pupil so that the pupil is not included. Um, and I'm decreasing the size because I have the softness turned down and I want the pupil, if you were to look at the original, the pupil is dark in the center, but it it, it, it's really dark in the center and it sort of gets softer on its way out and so that's kind of why I'm adjusting these brush sizes and the hardness uh, so that I can get it to look right and sort of gradually get softer in its darkness. Okay, so that <clears throat> it's getting there. Let me turn the size down a little bit and now I want to start to adjust the edges. Alright, so you can see here I want to soften that edge because it starts to get like this sort of lighter halo where it gets into the white of the eye. And I'm just barely grazing the edge of it with my soft paintbrush so that it sort of feathers the edge of the eye. And now I can also take the eraser tool because <clears throat> you'll notice that, excuse me, uh, if I jump out of quick mask, you'll notice that my border kind of doesn't include some of the dark edges right there. And that's going to look strange if I don't get those included in my in my mask area. So I'm going to go ahead and change my brush size, turn the hardness down a little bit, change the size so it is turned down. And then I can kind of start to erase some of the edges of the mask with the softness of my feathered brush. Okay, and so it start it starts to include that stuff. Okay. And you see that I'm just sort of like gently kind of teasing this out and making the, the edges a little bit softer and you can see that like it's actually exposing some of the that dark edge that's that's actually in the picture um, 
so that it'll end up looking a lot softer and not like somebody cut it out of a magazine with a pair of scissors and just plopped it down on the on the image. Okay, so I'm going to just keep on going like that. And you also notice that I did increase the hardness of my brush a little bit. So we've got we've got sort of like not quite such a blurry blurred out edge, which is good on especially on this side because you don't want it to look like um, it's you know too fuzzy and too too soft. Okay, so let's take it out of quick mask mode. And let's take another peek at what we've got so far. And I'm going to go ahead and save my selection so that nothing happens to it. I'll call it Right Iris. And um, I'm going to go ahead and change the zoom on this so we can zoom out and kind of see a little bit more. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now I can actually add the other selection that I had made. So I can go to load selection and I can say add to selection and I can choose left iris. And so now it'll load both of those and I could choose them independently if I wanted to, which is really nice. And I'm gonna also show you what, if you turn off select, selection edges, they're still selected, but you can't see them. I just wanted to show you that little trick. It can be sometimes confusing, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do another hue saturation, colorize it, and then I'm going to turn the saturation down so it doesn't look like they're wearing those sort of scary bright contacts. Um, and I'm going to adjust the color so that it's sort of like a slight blue-green, sort of a greenish color, I guess. And then if I turn the saturation down a little bit more, it sort of gets that blue-gray, but with some green hints of color in there, all right? And, and it still looks kind of dark, but don't worry about that, all right? I don't want you to worry about that right now. Let's turn the saturation down just a little bit more so that they look natural. Because that's kind of the goal. And I want to show you, like, if I take it up to blue, it actually can start to look a little bit too unrealistically saturated. Let's just leave it right around there. And then look what happens if I do it, make it darker, or if I make it, like, really light. You know, they look like those those contacts that are sort of like club contacts, right? And um, let's just leave it at a sort of a normal, natural-looking color. And then if we want to highlight some of the, the brightness in the eyes, we can do that later. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, but right now, one of the things that I, you know, that I'm a little bit concerned about is the, the whiteness in the eyes. So I'm going to choose the magnetic tool, and I'm going to choose the whites of the eyes. That's the selection I'm going to make. And the... The the magnetic lasso is wonderful. You got to take it really slow though, otherwise it'll start to do some really weird stuff with your selection. And don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect. And the other thing too is uh, make sure that when you're doing this eyelid area in the lower part of the eye, that you don't um, that you don't accidentally also include sort of the three dimensional part of the skin on the the inner eye because you want that to to still look natural because we're going to change the color of the white of the eye and we don't want to change that little edge of the skin on her eyelid on the lower part of her eyelid. I want to zoom in and now I can like go back and sort of clean up that selection with the polygon lasso tool where it didn't quite make the selection perfectly and I'm gonna make sure that that little section is uh, excluded the part that um, is actually the white of the eye. And then now I want to get the, the white of the eye included where it kind of bumped it out. And so it looks like a much cleaner selection there. Okay. And then also over here, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to the selection where it starts to dive towards the tear duct and make sure that, you know, you don't get the, like, it's a really fine line where that tear duct is and the, um, the the sort of um, tissue that transitions the tear duct in. Make sure you don't do that. And then I'm cleaning up this top edge. And I think that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good selection for the eye or for the whites of the eye. Okay, and so I'm going to actually put a feather 
on that image because I forgot to the first time, a one pixel feather. And now I need to save that selection. Um, and so the feather was so that, you know, I didn't make it too harsh. 